Today, I will introduce how to use a regular Sony camera or the camera and then connect it to this computer to do YouTube live stream. Today, I am using our company's Fabon 179 Plus D Capture Card. Fabon 179 Plus HDMI Capture Card. As you can see, there are two HDMI ports here. You need to connect the camera's HDMI here. This is called HDMI in. Connect it to the HDMI port. And here, there's a USB-C port. Then connect this cable. This is a USB cable. Then connect it to your computer. So right now I'm connecting this. Connecting the USB-C of Fabon 179 capture card. Connect it to your computer. Then when you are officially live streaming, please make sure to use a wired network. This is a wired network. You must connect your computer using a wired network. This way your live stream won't drop. Because Wi-Fi is just too unstable, you must use a wired network. And this was just connected to this Fabon 179 capture card. Then, turn on your HDMI camera. Connect your HDMI cable. Then connect it to your Fabon 179 Plus HDMI capture card. To the HDMI import. Plug it in. Then, your camera must be specifically selected. Not all cameras will work. Usually, Sony cameras, if they are above USD 500, generally will work. Before you use it, please connect your camera to your TV first. Let's do a test. So how do we test it? It's simple. Just prepare a TV. Our first test is this. This Sony camera. Okay, connect it now. This is the HDMI output. Connect it to the TV. Okay, you notice something. The TV will have sound with an echo. Okay, this tells you something. It means the TV has an echo. This indicates that this camera has audio capability. If it didn't have audio, there wouldn't be any echo. This is the first thing. Did you notice that this image is very clean? The image is very clean. When you are live streaming, the image looks like this. In other words, whatever image appears on the TV, your live stream will show the same image, just like that. All right, let's test another model. For example, this model is the Canon X3. Here, this is its HDMI output. This connects to this. All right, you will notice something. I will turn on the sound. You will notice three things. There are black edges here. When you go live, there will be black edges too. All right, the second thing. You see some information here. Camera information. What ISO is it? Auto and battery symbol. These will also appear in your live stream. The third thing is when I turn on the sound. Is there no echo? What does no echo mean? It means this camera. It does not have audio recording capability. Okay. So when you want to use this type of camera for live streaming, it can be a big problem. It just can't capture audio. Also, the video will have these issues. We call these issues a lack of clean HDMI. So how do you eliminate these problems? You need to eliminate them from the camera itself. The role of the capture card is like that of a TV. Next, you need to connect your microphone. Usually, our microphone should be directed at our principal. We speak towards our superiors. If you use this directly for audio capture, I usually recommend using an external one. Microphone, for example, this microphone is a UX in. This is the standard camera microphone. Please remember to check its port. His hole is a triple ring of 3.5. Then, please go buy a USB sound card. This costs only 30 NT dollars. You can find it at outdoor markets or on Shopee. It's only 30 NT dollars. Now, look at this port. There is this one here. If there's a microphone symbol, just plug it in. So why do we need to buy another USB? That's for the sound card. Does that mean all computers? Their ports are all separate types. Some have just one port. If there's one port, it needs a headset. We usually connect professional microphones. They have separate headphone and microphone jacks. It requires two ports. All computers might have one or two ports. Well, if that's the case, let's just forget it. Just go ahead and buy a sound card. That way, it's simpler. You just plug it in. Next, 
Insert your sound card into your computer. We have now connected the camera. Connect the capture card. Then connect it to the computer. The microphone connects to this mic in sound card. It's about USD $1. Then connect it to the computer. Next, we'll go to the computer to make some settings. Because we just connected this sound card. So please right click in the lower right corner. Then open this mixing program. Then there is a system sound effect playing here. Then remove the others. When you plug it in, it will. It will default to this USB audio. Please turn it off. Then it will revert to your computer's original speaker settings slip of the tongue. Please open this OBS. OBS looks like this when opened. Actually, there's no need to be afraid of OBS. This is how OBS is. What appears on this screen? Live streaming shows what appears. Wait a moment. Put your camera feed into this OBS screen. Then your live stream will show this screen. It's not just the camera feed. You can also add various other images. For example, you can set the first image to say, Welcome. Then add a second one. Let's add a second one. That is, switch to this camera. Keep adding. For instance, you can set this. The class annual review. It's good to the end. Thank you for coming. Anyway, you will use your mouse to switch here. When you switch, this screen will change accordingly. Whatever appears on this screen, your live stream will show that. Then we have another task. We need to connect this ops. How to make a connection with your YouTube. First, let's add the first scene. How can we add this? For example, for instance, I will add the first one called the introduction. Then I'll move this to the front. So, what exactly is the content of this opening statement? Usually, it starts with saying, Hey, we are going late. And it should include something like welcome. We can start by creating an image. How do we create an image? You can create the image in PowerPoint first. Online graduation ceremony. Then save it as a new image. A JPG image. After saving it, you can add an image. Add a new image. For example, Write welcome on it, then grab your welcome image. Alright, welcome. Then, let's enlarge this. The first thing parents or students see is this. The screen looks like this. Next, we'll add our camera. Now, let's bring up the camera feed. You think the name for this scene son is wrong. You can change the name, it's fine. Rename him and change it to a camera. Okay, so what content does this camera scene have? Alright, this camera is meant to capture the feed from our capture card. This is the Fathom 179 Plus HDMI capture card holding a camera like this. So what does his footage look like? It's called a video device. Capture the video device and add it. Then I just use that camcorder. Just give it any name. What about device name? It's called 4K capture card. Please remember. You can capture in 4K or Full HD. I'm using Full HD for the demonstration. Capture Full HD and at this frame rate. You can choose the highest. I'm testing at 30 FPS. Then you can capture in YUV. If you want good quality, go for RGB. Then I'll just capture the YUV. Right now, there is video. Currently, I'm capturing the footage from this camera. You can see it, right? Let me first capture an animal. The animal will represent the student. Then OBS will display the image of the animal. This will act as the student. Okay, I now have video of this student. And then, you need to add sound. For sound, it's capturing audio input. It's input, not output. Okay, let's use that mic. Then we'll capture that USB from earlier. The part about the sound card. This USB sound card. Of course, if you if you don't use a sound card, just grab this 4K one because for 4K it comes from the sound from the microphone on the camera, but the camera is too far from the speaker, so the sound can't be focused. That's why I added this USB sound card. This is the sound card. You can buy this for about 30 NT dollars. 
All right, let's continue to grab. Got it. And now you see the mic is moving. Right. It means that we have captured the sound. We should create two scenes. Switch. Then later, I used my mouse to select. To enter here, officially entering the graduation ceremony. Now for my third scene. I can also add my daily experiences. These daily experiences could be your videos. And for the videos, we can also capture. Here, we provide the multimedia source, like this. To capture, to take your videos, to extract the videos from the computer. For example, what I'm grabbing is this. It's a snapshot of daily life. So, you can switch using your mouse. This is the initial welcome screen. This is the camera feed. And this is the daily life segment. Now, for your daily life segment, you can also mix in your microphone. That's the host's microphone. It's for adding audio input. The microphone for the host is this one. It's already set up. So currently, this is what I have. There are two sounds in this scene. One is the microphone for the host's speech. The other is the multimedia source. So now our scene is designed with free. We need to ensure this sound is correct. It's moving, right? Cut out the unnecessary parts. Only keep what you've truly added. All right, now for the daily moments, you should also keep just two. One is this microphone, this one. And then the sound from this multimedia source is from the video itself. You can adjust the ratio for this too. I'm afraid this sound is too loud. You can adjust the ratio like this. Next, we can add this logo. All right, let's add a logo for everyone to see. If we jump over here, we add the logo. A logo is basically just an image. So just add an image. PNG with a transparent background for better quality. All right, let's grab the school's logo. This is what my school's logo looks like. To make it clearer, I intentionally made it a bit larger like this. This logo can actually be modified in some ways. For example, you can add this by right clicking. You can make that semi-transparent. All right, like this. Add something semi-transparent. Here, you can add it to the mask. Then there's a second one called the alpha channel. And here, in the path, select that photo logo again. The image from that file. Grab it again, then you can choose the scale. This way, you can see. The logo here is semi-transparent. Okay, let's choose this. We just set up this OBS. The settings above, what appears on OBS is the live stream. Next, we will connect this OBS to your YouTube live streaming. This is your YouTube. On YouTube, you can click on go live first. Now we will connect this YouTube live stream to your OBS. Please click this to start the live stream. Okay, if nothing appears when you click to go live, when this screen shows up, it means your YouTube account hasn't been verified yet. Please send a text message or something. Usually, you'll see this screen. You need to see this screen for sure. Follow this. And then, it's today 20 May. But my graduation ceremony is on June 20. So I'll be here. Press here. I'm currently preparing for the graduation ceremony on June 20. I'll just write June 20. How do I write graduation ceremony? If you do it this way, you can give parents a heads up. June 20 is the day. Start the live stream. Then I'll press continue. Ah, is this for kids? Press it. Right. Because it's not for me. Then press continue to schedule the next day. Please schedule it for 20th at 10 o'clock. That's it. Done. We can turn off the computer now. We'll turn it back on on June 20. We just set it up for a live stream on June 20. So we can turn off the computer now. It's already set up. And now the time has been adjusted. Now it's already June 20. Let's open the computer again. How do I retrieve the one from June 20? How can I put that event up? No worries, just click here to start the live stream. And over here, there's a management option. Do you see it? Clicking here will take you to Upcoming live stream. Is this for June 20? Just click it. Oh, there it is. It's already June 20 now. Actually, that. Why can YouTube schedule this live stream? I'm planning a week from now. 
I want to go live in a month. I can announce this to everyone first. And then, during this time, your school will use that channel. It will go through YouTube's algorithm. It will be broadcasted. That's just a rough time frame. You can tell your parents and kids it's June 20. But actually, my live stream is on June 19. That's fine. That's just a tentative date. Let's YouTube's algorithm distribute this content from your school to inform everyone. So that's just a rough time frame. It's not a definite time. Well, it's already June 20 now. In fact, it's still the same day. No worries, I'll show you. All right, now you see. Here we have the RTMP and the key. This is the RTMP. Please copy this down. What are we doing now? We are going to connect this platform. YouTube. Make a connection with OBS. How do we connect? The connection relies on those two pieces. One is the RTMP. The other is the key. Their passphrase. Once they combine the passphrase, you can then stream your OBS to your YouTube for live streaming. Copy it down. Copy this and then go to your OBS. There's a settings area in OBS. This is the stream. This is to connect your YouTube channel with your OBS. You can click on this custom option, then paste the RTMP server here. Alright, then there's a key here. The key goes to your YouTube, right here. Copy it and paste it into OBS. Apply and confirm. This action connects my OBS channel with my YouTube. Once connected, press live. This will send OBS to YouTube before we officially send it out. We should still press settings. Output settings for streaming. This is where you set up audio and video streaming. If you have the NVIDIA option, select NVIDIA. If not, choose Quick Sync as a last resort. This is the best option. This can improve your CPU usage. Make it more efficient. The resolution here matches the backend. Just set for HD. Now for the bit rate, the higher the bit rate, the better. You can set it to 5 or 600, that's fine. My internet connection isn't great. I'll just set it up like 300, then click apply. Also related to our backend is the video here. Everything here should be set to full HD. You can do 60 or 30 FPS. Apply. Confirm like this, okay. Right now. Our backend is all set up. We just need to press this start button. Press it and we'll jump back to the browser. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay, you can see the screen now. Alright, just press it and it will really go live. Okay, we really went live. We have already started the live broadcast and this has a mouse. You can control what you want to play now. Like this, this is according to the students. That animal belongs to the student. And then, just daily life moments like this. It seems like it went live. So what are you seeing now? Actually, your YouTube live stream shows what? Alright, let's actually use our phone to watch streaming. What does the live stream look like? I'm using apps to adjust this scene switch. Switching, 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 switching. Then let's take a look. Scene switch. Switching, switching. Switching, switching. Then let's take a look. All right, what this phone shows is real. This is what the student's parents see, like this. So you can add some scenes here. Okay, is this the opening line for the first scene? The visuals. Then the third one is about daily life moments. Are you still increasing or adding more? Anyway, remember one principle. It's about what appears in ops. Your live stream is about what appears. That's a simple introduction. Thank you, everyone.